part of it and I didn't do a voiceover or anything like that. Um, my drawing is finish, finished now and it looks like this. And what I'm going to do now is because, yeah, I don't know if you can see it really well, but all the lines have been faded out because of the uh, pencils. So what I did, I um, left my stamp in the stamp positioning tool and I'm going to re-stamp it. Now it's all done. So I'm just putting it back in my stamp tool. And now I'm going to ink it up again and do the next layer so all the lines are visible again. Look, this is a lot crisper. It was. I'm gonna do it one more time. Yeah. That looks good. So now I'm gonna clean up my stamp and go on to the sentiment for my. This is the Studio Light Basic uh, stamp, and it's this one, and there's a sentiment um, here as well, but I didn't want to use that one, I wanted to make a celebration card. It says, love is all you need, celebrating in the air, sweet. That's what on what's on this stamp, but I'm not going to use that this time. And this is Studio 082 in the shop. So I will put this one back. And I'm, I'm getting my sentiment from another stamp from the shop. And that's this one. This is new in my shop. A new brand, I must say. And this is Stamp 008. And it's a Woodware Craft Collection stamp. And I'm just going to use the sentiment here, which says, Happy Birthday to you. So I'm going to line everything up the way I want it and stamp it down again with the same color as I used for my uh, flowers. And that's the Versifying Claire in the Morning Mist. I really love these Versafine uh, ink pads. Um, the only thing is you have to be aware of is that it takes a little bit more time to dry. So if you want to do something else quickly or you start coloring, make sure it's totally uh, dry. And to make sure you can always use your um, heat tool to speed up the process if you want to. So I'm gonna try to space it out as well as I can. I think that's a good place. It's really difficult with this one because the birthday, um, because of the Y, it's turned slightly. So it looks like it's crooked, but it's not. Let's stamp this one out. I'm going to do it just one more to make a really crisp impression. It's not really necessary, but I like it when it's good and stamped. like 
and now we're just gonna put the card together. Let's clean off these stamps really quickly. And I will put them back in the bags later on. Um, what I did, I was, when I'm, I already made this card once and I'm gonna show you um, what I did. There's a, a little bit of difference. I hope you can see that. This one I made and I just started coloring with the right colors straight off. So I just started with the darkest going out to the lightest. What I did with this one, as you saw, I started with a layer of white on everything and then started to color. And you can see it's a little bit more brighter when you do that. I hope the camera picks it up. This one is much brighter than this one and that's because I put a white layer underneath before I started coloring. So that's the difference between using some white underneath and just start coloring like this one. So I, I, I think I prefer this one. It's a little bit more fresh than this color but this one is pretty uh, also but I think I like this one better so um, I just took a white base card to get it so I'm going to do that now I'm just gonna fold it and then I'm gonna take a smidge off every side from that uh, piece of craft cardstock so that there's a white border all the way around this card. So, my base, and then I'm gonna take my trimmer and just take a smidge off every side. I'm not gonna do it on just one side because then it won't be spaced out right anymore so and what I did is I laid it down under and then slide it over to the I hope you can see that it's not a I'm not really sure what size it is but I just take it up to that black line and then when I do that to every side it's a perfect fit. Let's see. No. Okay. Oh, it's already taken back all the way. Like that. And then on this side as well. side and then it fits perfectly on the card size like this so I'm just gonna put some glue Just give it a good push on the back to make sure it's all glued down really well. So and what I did on this card, and I'm go gonna do that again, is take some um, gel pen, white, just a white gel pen, and do a dash line around the long sides. Uh, on this card, I used some jewel drops in the um, translucent uh, version. No, it's not that one. Let's see this one. I used this one 
and this is the Jewel Drops Rose Water. But as you can see, I, it is pretty, but I really wanted it to be a little bit more closer to the colors from the flowers. And because this is translucent, and when you look at it like this, I think, oh, that goes okay. But when it dries up, it, you will uh, clearly see the color of the paper underneath. So it's a little bit more brownish than the pink one I chose. So I'm going to choose a different color this time. And maybe not a translucent one. Uh, let me see what I'm going to pick out this time. To fit this. Maybe I'm just going to do the white. Yeah, I'm going to go for the white. But I'm going to do that last. I'm going to do the uh, gel pen first because then the Nouveau drops have all the time it needs to dry. I'm just taking my ruler, line it up as best as I can and just put down the stippling line. I hope you can see that. it in a bit. It's not that no noticeable for you because my uh, ruler is in the way, but you will see it when it's all finished. So that's that one. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the paper. So, that's it for the white gel pen. I'm gonna zoom back out again. So, this is what it looks like so far. And now I'm just gonna do some jewel drops. Of, uh, no, not jewel drops. Nouveau crystal drops in the simply white. Hope you can see that. I will put the links to the products I used from the shop down below so you can find them there. I'm going to use a little bit of scrap paper before I'm going to put it down on my... Did you see that? It, it There's always a little bit of uh, air in the inside the nozzle and when you just put it right on your project you will make a mess. So I don't do that anymore. Don't ask me how I know. And I'm just going to put some drops around the piece. I'm going to put them down in some different sizes. Like so. I think that's enough. I always try to do uneven numbers. So I'm just gonna tap it a little bit on the back side to flatten them out a little bit and the rest will flatten out when it's drying. So this is what it looks like. Um, I just wanted to say I didn't say anything when I started coloring. I'm not a color expert. I don't really uh, have a clue <laughs> what I'm doing. I'm just coloring how I think it's 
uh, it looks nice and um, especially with these pencils I really have to practice so this is just to follow along but don't um, think I'm gonna uh, I want to educate you on this coloring because I'm not good enough for that so it's maybe maybe you just like to watch how I color but it's definitely not something you can use to really learn your coloring skills but there are a lot of videos of a lot of great uh, people out there that do really know what they're doing with colored pencils so I encourage you to go look at uh, some of those videos and uh, just use this as a uh, as some ID to make cards and not just uh, to learn how to color because that wasn't my item intention sorry <laughs> sometimes it's difficult so I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I'll hope to see you soon bye bye